here you can see a uh, adult mantid right here, maybe uh, very familiar to uh, many people, and as well as we have some treatment groups of uh, some early insurance or early uh, age classes of mantids being fed solely pollen. This yellow line here is that, that pollen. So what we do is we, we uh, grow these mantids in captivity uh, on these different treatment groups as well as we capture mantids from the field and really we're looking at a diet comparison between those in the lab and those in the field. And uh, we bring them into the lab uh, and dry them out through a freeze drying process uh, and then we essentially grind them up with a uh, mortar and pestle uh, down into usually a, a pretty fine uh, powder. And uh, that powder uh, ends up being uh, really the material that we use to process through uh, what's called an isotope ratio mass spectrometer and that really gives us that that uh, biochemical signature so that we can compare different organisms and compare tissues uh, in those organisms. So um, after we uh, have them in this powder form uh, we weigh them out into small uh, tin cups and uh, in very very uh, small amount usually on, on 0.2 uh, milligrams or so, um, run them through the machine and essentially we get some values that we can use to uh, compare uh, organisms to one another. One large question that hasn't been really addressed well yet is what exactly they're eating in the wild. Uh, they've been shown in captivity to uh, be able to consume not only uh, things among their own uh, trophic levels, so other mantids, spiders, things like that, but also crickets, things uh, below their trophic level, as well as even down at the primary producer level. Some mantids have been shown to uh, have a dependence on pollen and can actually live and grow and uh, survive on pollen alone, which is sort of a very unique adaptation for, for insects. Um, so what we're doing is we're trying to come up with a, a critical evaluation uh, of their diet by looking at the stable isotopes uh, in their tissues. So really looking at the biochemical signature of the mantids in comparison with their prey. So one of the ways that we actually look at uh, the mantids is by plotting up those isotopic ratios that we get from running those samples through this, um, through this machine, the isotope ratio mass spec, and plotting them relative to the amount of carbon in their tissues and the amount of nitrogen in their tissues. And by plotting them up in this way, we can actually see uh, the food chain. We can see different steps in the food chain. So in the upper right hand corner of this graph, um, the, the heavier or the higher amount of nitrogen and, and carbon in their tissues is higher up the food chain. Um, so if we have organisms plotted in that upper right hand corner, these would be considered top predators. And that's really where we expect those praying mantids to be. So depending upon where they fall out on this graph, based upon the, the results of our analysis, uh, we can really kind of tell some sort of combination of different diet sources uh, into the praying mantid diet.